Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 10 of Kerbal Collaborative Warfare. Yes, we are finally back. It's been a little while. Uh, Agonarch was ill, but you know, he's fine now. That's his thing, I won't talk about it too much. But anyway, yes, we are back after a month, and it has been, well, the last turns people have taken have been rather, uh, not devastating, but not, not, not making us happy. Twitchy retook Cola Crater with a helicopter and challenged me to a helicopter-based war over Cola Crater, which I will accept, but not this turn, because, well, for the last few turns, Penguin has been hell-bent on trying to keep me away from Twitchy and, you know, trying to, trying to just make me focus on him, so he has succeeded today and he will incur the full wrath of the territorial arctic protect protection on taunt and maybe even for the f next few turns so basically he um retook twin peaks um after my turret mysteriously committed seppuku not entirely sure what that was about and working on it um and also took the krc2 once again and worst of all the perfidious penguin stole my empath raptor for the second time this time, however, he was not trying to spark a scandalous war with Agonarch. He was just taking it for himself and his greed and his uh, just being a, being a bastard initiative, I think. Um, so yeah, he's uh, left that down in Hanbert Cape, but don't you worry, I will be going to take it back or destroy it, one or the other, preferably the first one. So, that is what we're doing today. That is our first order of business, and then we shall retake KSC2. Also, the Congress has met up again. Yes, if you don't know, because I don't mention it very, like, very clearly, we have a Congress where all of the uh, participants get together and make some rules for the um, collaborative warfare. They're not technical game rules, but they are rules we should abide by if we want to stay in Congress. And the newest one is a Keneva convention. Apparently, Penguin has been rather unhappy with my current method of disposing of, you know, prisoners of war. So we are no longer allowed to kill unarmed Kerbals. But he said nothing about using Jombi as my new kind of armor. Anyway, let's get right into it. Yes, so the first order of business today is a bit of asset reclaiming. Um, so as you know, our Empire Raptor, well, my Empire Raptor, it's not yours, it's mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, which Penguin doesn't seem to believe, he believes it's his. Um, so he went and stole uh, my empath, so we're sending another one to go and rescue it. You just saw me flick to the uh, turret there with its new specialized armor made of John B. Kerman. Um, not armor, he's just having a nice seat in the sun on the turret. I thought I'd give him the best view possible. Uh, so I put him there, and also Penguin won't blow it up, um, because he wouldn't kill John B., even though he did revive Jebediah as Mech Jeb. But anyway, yes, we're going to reclaim our... Um, our Empath Raptor with another Empath Raptor, uh, loaded with double armament today. Uh, four little buds of missiles, which, uh, yeah, is hopefully good, but impedes me a little bit in speed. I'm actually having a little trouble getting uh, up to speed. And um, although that happens quite a lot this episode, we'll talk about that. But yes, this is the third Empath Raptor I've had stolen from me. The first one was stolen by Twitchy, which I left in a base that he retook. He stole it and crashed it. Um, the second one was stolen again by Penguin to launch a to try and spark a war between me and Agonarch, and the third one was stolen by Penguin from um just just to be just to be kind of mean, so we'd have more assets next turn and I'd have less. But I'm not I'm not settling for that shit. He's not keeping my freaking plane. Um, so yeah, I probably shouldn't have left it in an active at the front of an active war zone, but I did, and uh, you know, um, yeah. But the bigger mistake is stealing it from me. So. Now we're going to get it back. Uh, yeah, you can see I'm actually having trouble getting up to speed right now. Um, it just, I think my launch, my ascent trajectory is kind of shitty, so that's probably the main issue. But yeah, anyway, we'll just uh, cruise there. Obviously, at four times time is slowly. You don't want to watch it all. I will. I am cutting out most of the flights in this episode, but you know, leaving the first one, you get to see the nice bit of the desert um, as we cross the ocean to go to that peninsula. Now this base is. Protected by a Poseidon, which is one of um, one of Penguin's big giant boats with a trillion missiles on it, which is uh, a little little uh, little problematic. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that this first attack has no live commentary because the game kept crashing. A lot of crashes today. Uh, it crashed about I think it crashed twice, and then uh, a couple more times it just dropped to half a frame a second. 
Um, so there will be a slight janky cut in a little bit where we pick up from a quick load where I managed to get it not to crash, but I wasn't in the mood for commentating after all of that, and it would have wouldn't have been high quality anyway because I would just be saying the same things for like the fifth time, and that's never particularly good. So anyway, here we are moving in for the attack. Now my plan is to swoop around the back because the Poseidon's at the front, and my initial plan was kind of hit that first, but I'm thinking come around the back so I can get the lad as well. Um, also avoid the forward-facing gun because uh, on the Empire Raptor because the Raptor has been set up for AI defense mode. However. Um, firstly, it won't take off like that, the engine will just break off, and secondly, Penguin didn't turn the engine on, um, as I now know in post-commentary, so it's not going to be a problem, but I was just mostly avoiding the gun, because I thought it would just stall on the runway when it breaks its engine off. But yeah, also this way I'm protected by the runway from the Poseidon, uh, it also just gives me a better angle of attack, and I can take out the weak target first. But yeah, um, I thought 12 missiles would probably be good for this. Anyway, into 1 times time accelerate for this, uh, we're not quite on range yet, so it's still quite buttery smooth, but... I think that'll soon drop off. I don't really even notice that that much anymore. I accidentally turned my engine off there, meant to fire a missile. Anyway, popping away our first um, missile to try and just kind of get in a few hits first. Uh, it also appears to distract the missiles, which is good, um, because Penguin uh, makes the mistake of leaving his um, uh, scan interval on one, so it's actually quite possible to just uh, distract a turret with um, Hellfire missiles it'll just fire its missiles at it. Anyway, you can see I'm deploying more of my missiles, I think the rest of them actually, towards the Poseidon, um, because I really want that dead, and it has a flat cannon, no it doesn't. It has a, no, it has a goalkeeper on it, which isn't, which is quite effective at taking down missiles. I mean, it is, at least for me. You can see a few missiles just falling short there, because I'm able to pull out quite easily. Um, but I've got some intercept missiles coming in now, although those may have been fired at Hellfires. Oh no, they do just narrowly miss me. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, and you can also see that the uh, lad is now firing um, viciously with its uh, cannons at my Hellfire missiles, but I doubt that'll be a major problem. And you can see the just spray of missiles coming off of um, the Poseidon, that is how many uh, Sidewinders were fired. All, I'm pretty sure, at my missiles, which is relatively important, so I don't get killed by the bajillion missiles, which is the exact amount I counted, a bajillion. Yeah, um, a lot of my missiles are being blown up right now, but I fire another one anyway. anyway. But uh, it looks like a few are going to land in, and it's only a, it's, it's a boat, so I'm thinking it won't be too hard to destroy. And there we go, it blows up into a trillion pieces. Um, again, counted, it was a trillion, a bajillion miles, a, miss a, 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 a bajillion missiles and a trillion pieces. Anyway, that looks pretty good, and there's a couple more sailing in there to just to finish the job. Because we uh, definitely, definitely want that dead. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure it's separated the front section from any kind of weapons, so that's pretty good. Also, the lad is dead. The only thing still alive down there with a guard mode on is an Empath Raptor. However, it hasn't taken off, and at this point, I figured out that the engine wasn't on. Uh, <laughs> because it should at least try to take off. I was thinking it would actually break its engine off and maybe roll into the Poseidon, which would have been fantastic, but I'd rather have the plane back, I guess. So yeah, I am going to want to avoid that turret at the front. Um, anyway, skipping ahead, I decided to land in the mountains down here because uh, the beach was a little bumpy, and these aren't mountains, these are hills, and this was some really nice flat-looking land. And the thing is, it's quite hard to just land in a very specific point with a VTOL um, jet engine, so I didn't want to accidentally go into the firing arc of the Empire Raptor and lose this one, because then I'm just two Empire Raptors down and nobody gains anything. So anyway, touch was down pretty good, was pretty scared out that I'd break the engine off. Also, accidentally left the VTOL engines on, because um, I'm a fool. But anyway, not bad. And I only used about less than half my fuel to get here and do that attack, so I can put this somewhere safe as well. Anyway, so now time to drive down the hill, which is this bit? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just skipped ahead a little bit because it was a lot of me just kind of just clicking around and making sure everything was okay. But yeah, uh, now it's just a matter of getting on up that hill. Uh, fairly uneventful, fairly boring. Surprisingly easy to do this. Um, the only really scary bit was this little bit of a hill you can see. It was a very sharp ridge and I didn't want to like catch myself on it. Um, so yeah, I'm just easing over there really gently. Um, the engine's off, but it, oh no, it's on. Well, still, it keeps, for some reason, generating thrust, which was kind of annoying. But I do get over this quite a... I was maybe too cautious, but pff, you can never be too cautious when you're trying to defend a plane, um, to retake a plane that was stolen. Now, something I did notice in Penguin's video that he was 
quite gloaty about how he had taken my my raptor, and he was saying things like, you mad, bro? And then he challenged me to come and take on his Poseidon and his lad and my Empire of Raptor, which wasn't actually doing much. So, uh, hey, Penguin, you mad, bro? Seriously, though, you mad, bro? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's just get down the hill. Anyway, this is a little later of just showing rolling down the hill. Um, I just pull a right and go down the ridge, basically. But, you know, it's mostly just rolling downwards, breaking a little, trying not to go too fast, smash this into the arms. Um, just smash this into the uh, friggin' beach down there. That'll be annoying. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, although it is a plane, so if something does go madly wrong, I can just take off. Yeah. Um, annoyingly, that says P.E. Empav Raptor on it. Um, so, yeah, that's not right. I mean, who steals planes? Uh, Peter, you stole that plane that one time. No, I, that was... That wasn't... I, I wasn't stealing a plane. I mean, that was just taking... What was that? Was the spoils of war? Um, they were totally different situations. The exact same situation. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I may be guilty of plane thieving as well. Anyway, let's plant our flag because this is now ours. Um, because I thought I might as well take the base as well, which is necessary because I only brought one pilot, so I'm gonna have to deploy a pilot with my uh, turret to steal that Empire Raptor. Although it does actually have a probe core on it because it's um, Penguin's version of the Empire Raptor, which is obviously pretty much the same, you just put a probe on there, um, for various reasons, for murdering Latra. Uh, <laughs> probably meaningless to most of you, but still, he murdered a guy. Anyway, uh, here's the Kerbal uh, that I'm pulling out, obviously, he's at gunpoint. Um, totally, t totally not just me getting him out. Anyway, he jumps off because uh, he's a moron. Um, it, well, he went through Penguin's training school, so he... You know, pretty dumb. Anyway, um, <laughs> he just needs a little bit of a beatdown, so I just kind of um, face grab him, obviously. He's pretty suppressed now. Good, good. That was some good soldiering. I just leave him here so we can have a nice view of the ocean rather than doing horrible penguin based tasks. And the raptor is mine. I will be relaunching it. Um, anyway, but the foot. Oh, yeah, I have actually just relaunched it there without the probe core on it because. I don't want that, and I also want um, a ground attack variant on it, a ground attack missiles on it. Anyway, this is my turret. The new one, uh, which accidentally blew itself up on Penguin's last turn. Uh, and this is James Kerman. Uh, the, well, uh, he's, he's a, he is actually a new, one of our newest, uh, bestest pilots. Um, I know a lot of my pilots, I've just said, are, you know, fairly mediocre, like those guys in the Banshee that crashed it. But this guy, this guy is better than the, uh, the savior pilot over there. You know, the person who came in, I've forgotten what her name was, because she's not James, and James is the bomb. Anyway, we're just going to set up my new turret. Um, yeah, if you do, this is just my new flat cannon. Lots of missiles, incredibly well armored. Um, the flat cannon will take down most missiles, but uh, it's also, like, super well armored, so I think it's rated for, like, five um, Hellfire missile blasts before it's totally ineffective. Um, I mean, after the third or fourth, it might be on its side, but it'll still be firing. Anyway, it's time to get the uh, plane we brought here home, and James is taking that on because he's, uh, well, I mean, yes, he is a crack pilot, but he has uh, less combat experience, so our other pilot will be using the uh, Empire Raptor we just retrieved for, um, you know, uh, a, a mission towards the KSC-2. But yes, this should be relatively easy to get home now, much lighter without all those missiles, and it has more than half its fuel anyway, and it also is easy, it takes less fuel to land than it does to take off. Anyway, I'm just going to cut through this, but this is me going eh, pretty pretty well, about 800 meters a second, but still not a kilometer per second, I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, and here we are just coming into the landing from where we took off, the uh, Area 51, um, or KKVLA, there are actually two different bases, the uh, runway is called Area 51, and the heliport's called KKVLA, so weird. But yeah, um... This, uh, well, obviously this isn't armed enough to go and attack the KSC-2, but I will need to get that back. Um, I do have a couple of plans for that. Uh, the original plan was actually to fly the heavy assault plane in and do it, because I want to get the uh, MPAV somewhere safe, but it kept crashing whenever I started firing, like, fired a lot of missiles from the heavy assault plane. So, somewhat scuppering my plans, I had to just do it with the MPAV, but you'll see that later. Anyway, just a pretty standard landing. I didn't really want to do VTOL, um, because it's easier to land, not VTOL. So, yeah, when I can, I do land on runways normally. Um, but yeah, this is very, very successful. And, uh, you know, stole stole my plane back. Well, not stole my plane back, it was just asset retrieval. That's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm calling this, asset retrieval. Because, you know, Penguin's a bad person. He stole a plane. He, you know, he and he didn't turn the engine on. I mean, that was... He must have been pretty mad when I when I told him that in the group chat. It's like, hey, you didn't turn your engine on. 
Um, yeah, it wouldn't have taken off anyway, but still, I mean, I'm sure he was just too busy, like, punching bunnies or something to turn the engine on. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a Nazi, that's all we can say. I've really got to stop throwing slander at him, because that's, that's something Penguin does, because he's slanderous and all that. All that jazz, but yeah, our, uh, our hateful campaigns against each other are both very vicious. Anyway, back to Handbert Cape, my newest base, the newest tape-controlled place, and a sea base. So get ready for some naval warfare. Um, but yeah, we're just going to uh, do the same sort of takeoff. Uh, if you noticed earlier in the video, I didn't take off VTOL, but I did have the VTOL engines on. It gives me a very short takeoff time. It's more of a VTOL. Uh, oh no, no, it would be a JTOL, a jet-assisted takeoff and landing. Um, but it is, well, it's just easier to take off like that. Also, it could be good for aircraft carriers, which I might now be able to launch. Ha 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 ha. Um, although I imagine Penguin might be coming back here to stop me doing that and to retrieve his prisoner of war. Um, who I'm just leaving there, looking at the ocean. You know, he can he can do what he wants as long as he doesn't leave. Um, you know, we're very nice to our prisoners of war, especially with that new Kniva convention. We would never mistreat anyone. I mean, <laughs> I didn't shoot that guy last turn. Uh, yeah, so head over to KSC2, take back our base with the plane Penguin was going to use against me. You mad, bro? You mad, bro? You mad, bro? Uh, I imagine he's pretty mad right now. Um, but don't mess with the Territorial Arctic Protection, Anton, and don't take our freaking stuff. I mean, I'm not having a third Raptor go missing. And now I have two active Raptors and an active heavy assault plane. I have building myself an Air Force, which is rather nice. Anyway, yeah, this is armed with a standard amount of uh, missiles, just kind of... Six, which should be fine, although against a flat cannon, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is me just flying over there. Still not getting up to full speed. But anyway, I will be handing you over to past me for live commentary on the attack run of the KSC-2. Yeah, anyway, I am going to take this. Um, I'm going to hit the... Well, my initial plan when I had a plane loader with 20 Hellfire missiles was to... <laughs> hit this and then hit that when it was on the runway, but I need to destroy this flat cannon and I think it's going to need all six of my missiles. Um, so, yeah, and then I guess just wreck the um, helicopter type thing uh, in the air. From satellite images it doesn't appear to have any missiles, uh, it just has one very large forward facing cannon. Um, I'm hoping it won't be too accurate um, slash just will be hit by an asteroid would be ideal, um, but I don't, I, I, I feel like that's not a real option. Anyway, <laughs> let's just, let's just, let's just kill this thing. Alright, I need to actually start descending quite seriously. Uh, I don't want to be pointing right at it, but that's pretty much what I'm doing, because I'm also running annoyingly low on fuel, because apparently this can no longer go a kilometer per second, which it has always been able to do. Um, I'm going to just look back at my old footage, see if I'm doing something different. I do blame myself for that. <laughs> I doubt that would be a game thing, um, unless we've installed something. Uh, Alright. How how thrusty is this engine? Oh, Alright, oh shit, stop firing. C'est la vie, bitch. Actually, no. Sayonara. Damn it. Why do I say c'est la vie so much? That's not life. Sayonara is what I want to say. Uh, just going to spread these missiles out so they're less likely to be all taken out in one by one flat cannon shot. I also think I've distracted a ton of those Sidewinder missiles, so that's good. Um, but I just really... I'm not actually being locked onto yet, but I know that that turret is very, very deadly. Um, that looks like a hit. Uh, the Cerberus just exploded. Not the Cerberus, the Artemis just totally died. Oh, I'm about to be flacked, I think. Oh, there go the Hellfires. There goes... Yes! What the hell happened to the Artemis? Right. think the Cerberus is dead, but I'm learning from Penguin's mistakes. Uh, I'm then knowing that sometimes it's not, and will shoot you on the way down, as mine did, gloriously. Right. Scary battlefield now, because there's a plane that mysteriously exploded. Um, I think it has something to do with the kind of wheels it was using. Uh, it doesn't even seem to have moved. Uh, this is a problem I've actually found on other attack runs, so I'm not actually gonna... Uh, so I have... So it does consistently do this. This isn't a one-time glitch. I'm not entirely sure what the hell that's about, but I am gonna shoot it. 
This is not violating our new Kneva convention because he is still in what I assume to be an armed, um, uh, in an armed vehicle, so this is fine. Um, I need to, you know, secure my pilots, that sort of thing. Uh, I think we might be good, but it's very hard to say. <laughs> Um, nothing shooting at me, but it's not great form to just fly around and hope that things don't shoot you. Really, is what I found. Um, oh yeah. So I didn't have to do any air combat, which is nice. Which would have made the hap attack perfect, but ugh, glitch, glitchy, glitchy, glitchiness. Uh, I'm debating actually whether to even bother landing um, and just come back with a different vehicle gonna try and make sure all of this is dead uh, it doesn't look like it's doing anything I th uh, maybe I'll take a closer look uh, don't want there to be any doubt about me shooting unarmed curls but it still looks vaguely alive down there how alive is that because that's just a drone so there's no real problem with me just shooting the fuck out of it. He isn't firing back, so I'm feeling pretty good. Still gonna land on the bigger runway though. Um, you know what, no, I'm not gonna land this plane right now. Uh, I'm gonna bring in a different plane. I'm just gonna get, get on my way. Uh, yeah, so, good, good attack run. I also don't want to waste fuel because I've got to get out of here. Um, I want to put this plane somewhere safe as I've said. That went well. Um, shame for Penguin. That's always just a little bit disheartening to see uh, something explode. It has happened to me, it happens to everyone, but, uh, you know, it's because Penguin's a Nazi. Um, <laughs> somehow, somehow it's because he's a Nazi, trust me. Yes, indeed, everything that goes wrong is because of Penguin and his Naziness, but anyway, it's time to take this somewhere safe to stop Penguin stealing it. So my plan is the Arctic, because, um, that's far away. I mean, I, you know... It's it's just about splitting up your resources. So yeah, this probably has enough fuel, maybe. Um, as long as I get up to a reasonable speed um, and reasonable fuel usage, it should be fine. Uh, I mean, obviously it has less than half fuel right now because of an attack run. Anyway, I'm just going to skip through this, but we did get a nice beauty shot of flying over these rivers, which are in my territory because we have the beautifulest land. And then a quick shot of me getting some pretty decent speed up, actually. Um, so that was good. Yeah, we actually got back to the Arctic with... Just a ton of fuel left. I mean, just quite a lot. And you can see the biodome there, which is nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, just returning home to the Arctic, where we want to be, because the Arctic is very nice. Uh, and you will have noticed if I... Oh, yeah, okay. Well, accidentally flew in there on Team B. Uh, got my missiles fired at me, so I did I did quick load there, and I, didn't, I wasn't going to get shot by my own defenses. Um, but maybe they thought it was Penguin and his Penguin plane. Um, but obviously I told them about that. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to send in the HAP and finish off the job um, taking the base, because this was just to soften it up, and I think without all the missile fire, the HAP should be fine. Um, that's the heavy assault plane, by the way. The Mark III, incidentally. Uh, so yeah, here we are with our heavy assault plane Mark III. Been very useful. I re uh, used it to reclaim Edis' side. It's dropped many a probe around, and that's also where it's payload today. It's carrying a probe and a drop pod, um, and some missiles on the wings, actually, not in the bomb bay, because that's full of cargo. Just six, just in case I need to finish anything off, because I'm pretty sure Penguin's helicopter plane thing uh, is still has a gun, so I do need to get rid of that. And the um, drone defense, I'll just destroy that. So yeah, um, yeah, I just need to go and fly over there. Pretty, It's only about 200 kilometers, which is good, because it's a very slow plane. It flies about 170 meters per second max, which at four times time, well, I usually only fly it at like two or three times time accelerate, because it's a bit breaky. Um, but hopefully we'll be upgrading to the new version soon with the less random explosions. So that's good. Anyway, just taking off, and then there'll be a slight glitch here where I took a phone call and had to pause the game. But uh, yeah, uh, it's the standard setup. You will notice there are a few new things. Those air brakes on the side make it a little easier to land, but I have uh, been working on landing this. I do actually test run landing these thing, uh, this plane quite a lot, because it's quite hard to land. If you saw, I think, maybe last episode... Almost uh, almost rolled it over on the runway. But anyway, now for uh, our, our taking back of the evil 
the the KSC-2 from the evil penguin. So yeah, we're just gonna get into range, pop off a few missiles at that drone, and then pop off a few missiles at that uh the rest of that helicopter plane thing. I'm gonna keep calling it a helicopter plane thing because it was kind of planey. I didn't realize those uh, engines could face forward, but still, it doesn't perform like a plane. So we did accept that it would be a ground unit. <sighs> yeah, my uh, turrets actually incidentally did shoot down his new fighter jet. Um, he destroyed both of my uh, both my turrets. Well, one and a half of my turrets because the other one uh, remained alive and shot him as he was going into land. Bit of a lighting glitch there, but yeah. So he is working on new fighters, but I am also working on new fighters. And not just the HSI Mark II, because the HSI isn't so much a dedicated fighter, because it also drops bombs, but I am working on um, a dedicated air superiority craft, and it is, like, fantastic. Since uh, there's things like this Artemis, the defense plane, um, Penguin also has another defensive plane, I think Twitchy also does at Black Crags, um, if it's still there. Uh, yeah air superiority might become a thing. So look forward to dogfighting, and look forward to me winning that with my new unbelievably awesome plane, which probably you won't see for a while, but um, when you do, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know that the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente is the only place you want to be. You know why you should love the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente? Because we got, we, got, we got climates for everyone. We got the Arctic for people who like cold. Just popping off another missile there. Um, yeah, we got, we got the Arctic for people who like cold. We got we got the desert for people who like really hot. We got that island that in, in the middle of the ocean. Part of the Tea Party, by the way. The Tea Party is the uh, me and Aganarch's um, alliance. It's the terror. It's the tape on taunt with Aganarch. The Tea Party. I'm not sure if we actually called it party, but if we haven't, it should be the Tea Party. Anyway, now it's time to drop my drones off. Um, these are my little defense drones. You're probably thinking, Peter, why the hell aren't you putting out your turret here? Why, you still have a turret left. What are you doing, man? I have other I have other uses for that turret today. I could have launched a helicopter, but I'm going more on the defensive. And these drones, although Penguin has told me they're terrible, um, <clears throat> because he's mean, uh, <laughs> they are actually very hard to hit, because they're tiny and they have flares. Um, so, yeah. Uh, they're not super well armed, but they're very hard to kill, and if they're still there, it's pretty hard to land. Because uh, they do have guns. I'll also be deploying a second one. Could have taken three, wasn't really room in this cargo bay, and working on a heavy assault plane Mark IV, um, with a much larger, it's just basically a scaled up version of this with a few things changed. So, that could be good, because this plane might be kind of reaching the end of its usefulness. Anyway, deploy the parachutes on this, and put it on the ground. Uh, but we will obviously skip through all of that, all that stuff. Anyway, now I've got to um, drop the drop pod. Uh, no kerbal in it, actually. Just, you know, felt like dropping it. No, I totally put, forgot to put a kerbal in there. So it sort of just smashes into the ground, which means I'm going to have to land. Luckily, KSC2 is lovely, because it has that really big runway, which is really easy to land on. I don't know why I keep storing this plane at Jebediah Sand, because it has this horrible runway, which is so hard to land on in a plane as gigantic as this. Anyway, that smashes into the ground. Um... Rather sadly, because that that drop pod man, that was that was that was my best tech. No, it was just a pod, and it didn't have anyone in it, so who cares? It was just an extra bomb. Anyway, let's put this down. Deploying those air brakes. This also has drogue shoots on it now. Um, not going to use them here because they're not super necessary. But at Jebediah Sands, I'm often I rolled off the runway once, so I thought more braking would be good. I uh, also stopped braking just as I touch down because that really fucks you up. If one wheel just stops and the other one's still in the air, you get like a twist and your whole thing falls apart. Anyway, this is pretty good, yeah, so I just need to deploy a flag. Um, well, drop a flag. Deploy a flag. Everything's deploying and operations these days. Jesus. So military. Yeah, anyway, um, this whole thing was probably preferable than Penguin's original plan to drop an ast asteroid on me. It burned up in the atmosphere, so we let him do his turn again. I mean, I think that should have been his full turn, just burning an asteroid up. But apparently that's not fun. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I guess it was just a test. Anyway, this is mine again, Territorial Arctic Protection on Taunt flag. Not a very good flag, actually, because it has writing on it, and that's apparently against flag rules. So, yeah, but it's a fantastic flag. It also has a bear on it. Anyway, I'm going to try and take this plane off in this tiny bit of runway I have left. Luckily, it's got a lot of thrust and a lot of wing. Um... Has those space shuttle wings embedded in those giant plane wings, so it's pretty, pretty lifty, pretty nifty and lifty. <laughs> I'm so funny. Anyway, and then we'll return home, have a glass of whatever we drink. Well, I guess this is the um, desert. What do you drink in the desert? Nothing, because yeah, I guess probably not that much. I mean, 
you know, yeah, I mean, a lot of the religions in the in in the desert lands are dry country. Oh God, how are we gonna celebrate? You know, this isn't Earth. They're gonna they're, they're just gonna drink whatever. You know, um, vodka because we are Russia. Uh, wait, what does Germany drink? Nice beer. Uh, no, not a no no. Um, <laughs> that's not what we'll be drinking. Not because that implies that I would be it, but you know, because the Nazis were you know German, and I'm not you know I'm not so uh, okay. Dug myself a hole. <laughs> no, they'll uh, drink freedom beer, beer of freedom, um, because we've uh, liberated many bases from the perfidious penguin today. Him and his tyranny. Anyway, very long flight back. Um, takes about I don't know, like a trillion years, something like that. No, it's about twenty minutes, but with the lag, it's more like half an hour. So skip to me landing. Good. <laughs> That's hopefully I was what I was hoping for. Anyway, coming on this tiny, thin, really, really kind of, like, high up runway. Also coming down the middle of it, really putting those air brakes on. But I have the drogue shoots for this, so hopefully I'll slow down in time. Anyway, stop braking now so it doesn't fall apart on the runway. And deploy the drogues. Nice. Nice. Perfect. And then, uh, yeah, and then, then just brake properly and uh, got our plane back. This plane is proving very, very useful, actually. Pa carrying out a lot of the tasks I need done. Would have done the full attack run today, but obviously that wasn't so much an option. And it worked out better because I could drop those um, probe defenses. And I got the Empath Raptor where I wanted it to go. So, yeah, pretty good. Would have liked to hit a couple of uh, Penguin's bases. You know, just kind of hit a couple of his... Uh, uh, take away a few defenses, but it wasn't to be. He did a pretty good job of distributing my um, my my goals around Kerbin to stop me doing the things I wanted to do. But it's fine. He has four undefended bases right now, so he's not that great on defenses. Um, should be pretty easy to just walk in and take him. Um, hopefully, he'll spend more time defending his bases and less time using helicopters for assault. Because obviously the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente cares about, you know, protecting its citizens and not going on crazy war sprees. Anyway, putting out another one of my new turrets at Area 51 slash KKBLA. Um, because my Raptor is here and I want it to be, you know, protected. And this is the slightly newer variant that won't blow itself up because in Penguin's turn it may have blown itself up with an Amram missile. But it just deploys its missiles faster. But yeah, you can see it is, uh, you can get a good look at it now. Oh, and there is a central block uh, attached to all those, uh, well, actually attached to the landing legs and the wheels. That central block houses its control systems, its power systems, and its ammunition um, for those uh, Vulcan turrets and that flak cannon. And then obviously the missiles on the outside have a little bit of armor because if something hits that, it would be nice if all the missiles didn't fall off. I have tested this uh, extensively to be relatively rigorous. Not very good at driving, it tends to, you know, tip a lot. But I had a situation where it was on the uh, KSC. Um, launch pad and I blew up the launch pad <laughs> and it like was flung into the air and kept shooting down my plane <laughs> um, and shooting down missiles. It's very hardy. It's um yeah, it's I think it's pretty good. I mean uh we know Agonarch, our glorious ally is has the orb weavers which are um rather deadly. I mean those those freaking orb weavers man. Uh, they're not they're not to be trifled with. But yeah I'm hoping putting this here will give me a little extra protection on the plane. And also the fact that John B. strapped to a turret around here will hopefully mean that Penguin will think twice before getting in here. Anyway, I'll probably move that plane down a bit closer to my turret, and then, yeah. But that has been episode 10 of Collaborative Warfare. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to me slaughtering Penguin even more. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.